Welcome back to another edition of Between Two Fars. I'm Warnicky Miller here once again with Ted Rowe, who is the Chief Counsel at Johnson Space Center. We've had some wonderful discussions on the transformation that NASA has been going through the last two decades and the impact that that transformation is having on how we do our contracting work. Today, we're going to focus on the terms and conditions in our contract and the difference between how we used to do business and how we're seeing business being impacted today. Ted, what are some of the things that we need to be looking for as we move ahead? Yeah, absolutely. So, <clears throat> you know, we, we've seen this trend that for service-based fixed price, generally multi awardy contracts, we're having all of these different programs, right? It's this NASA's from a, from a mission human spaceflight perspective is really decentralizing rather than centralizing in the in the past for for instance uh under the apollo program we had one apollo program um, we didn't have a saturn V program we didn't have a command module program we didn't have a lunar rover program you know we had one apollo program uh, but now we've kind of split all that up we have an sls which is an analog to to saturn V. we have orion which is an analog to crew module and then and and the service module where even Orion has split up between you know a NASA funded uh, Orion capsule and then an ESA uh, provides the service module and we have a you know we have we never had a, a a lunar lander program but now we have an HLS program we didn't we didn't have a lunar rover program but now we have an EVA and human service mobility program so you know, NASA's really decentralized its human spaceflight programs based on where, as compared to where it was in the past. And because it's decentralized, we're seeing different types of service-based fixed-priced, generally multi awardy contracts, which I guess is kind of expected. Um, so in the past, because we we relied on traditional DDT and E contracts for these major system acquisitions, we got pretty good at it. For like 50, 60 years, you would expect over the course of 50, 60 years that uh, NASA gets pretty good at it, stays pretty consistent with the terms and conditions across multiple contracts. And so, you know, one contract typically you can expect the same, um, the vast majority of the same, you know, provisions in one contract versus another. But now that NASA has decentralized its its programs as it relates to human spaceflight. And and has adopted this uh, service-based fixed price, generally multi-awardee um, strategy for acquisitions uh, of its major systems. But now we're calling them really services. Uh, there's nuanced differences. For instance, at a high level, CRS crew uh, crew um, uh, resupply, uh, co commercial resupply, and CCT cap commercial crew transportation capabilities. Um, they're end-to-end -end service. Based contracts. So DDT and E, they do the design, development, test, and evaluation and provide the service. Um, you compare and contrast that to Gateway for power propulsion um, PPE as well as HALO, which is the habitat and logistics out, outpost. Um, it's just DD, it's design and development, and then they're supposed to provide us those systems and then we integrate those, um, those modules. So NASA actually is going to perform the, the integrated testing, the T and the evaluation to E. So it's a, it's a different nuanced model between Gateway and CRS and CCT cap. And that's going to result in different terms and conditions. Um, and so we need to be aware of those different terms and conditions. We can't just say, oh, it's C CRS is the same as HLS. No, it's not. There, there, there are nuanced contractual provisions and that's going to affect our procurement CLF folks. That's going to affect our IP CLF folks. They have to have at least a high level understanding of the difference and an awareness of the major differences across these different contracts. And, and the contracts, you know, there are a lot of them. We, we looked at a previous, you know, um, episode where we actually did a timeline, looked at all these different contracts that are following the service-based model. They're, they include, um, you know, the procurement contracts. We also have to be aware of 
barters that are going on, international agreements that are going on, funded space act agreements and go all different T's and C's, you know, and so it's very how important. Is, how is industry's input impacting the T's and C's that we see in our variety of contracts? What, what yeah, so voice do a, they have in this? So that's that's a good that's a good lead into the next collateral consequence. And we talked about it in a previous episode that in the past NASA relied on really politics for its um, its uh, development efforts. Uh, but now because we're partner with industry partners and, and they they answer to to different, you know, higher level uh, uh, folks such as their investors. So industry drivers are really affecting what development they do and, and how they develop you know space systems and this is going to permeate into t's and c's you know we in the past because we we're pretty much the only game in town it would be based on our terms and no one would really question those terms and conditions but now we're seeing that we put out our terms and conditions but we're getting some pushback from perspective off war saying that we don't necessarily agree with that that term or condition for example, as it relates to liability or as it relates to insurance or as it relates to data rights, just as examples, but it, it, it can be anything else as well. Uh, so um, we need to be cognizant that these external environmental factors that we talked about previously are affecting you know, how we work um, within our own, within NASA and within like the legal community within the procurement community, as well as how we interact with industry and international partners. Uh, because we've brought them into the critical path, that's gonna affect um, you know, how we deal with them. And because we brought them in this, the industry and you know, the service-based fixed price contracts, that's also going to affect um, you know, how we negotiate contracts with them in the future. I appreciate your insight on this and it's really been great talking about how this new way of doing business has impacted the changes that we can expect during contract administration and how we handle those changes and then today talking about our terms and conditions and how they're differentiating between different programs and different contracts and, and the impact that that's having there's some more collateral consequences though that we're seeing and i'd like you to come back one more time so that we can round out this discussion and have a fuller understanding of the impacts that we're going to see on our contracts moving into the future join us again next time between two fars <laughs>